who you're selling to. This is one of those topics that's more focused on the self-publishers than the trade publishers, but it's important enough that I think it needed to stay in the book. In this context, when I talk about trade publishers, I'm going to be talking about the bigger ones, the big five or however many there are now. I want to walk through how that process works at a very high level and contrast that with self-publishing because there are some important assumptions that come into play that can be harmful if you go down the self-publishing path and take a trade publishing mindset with you. So on the trade publishing side, you get an agent. That agent helps you get a publisher. That publisher publishes your book. If you're lucky enough, your book is made available in print, ebook, and audio formats and through a network of bookstores and libraries. While individual readers will find your books online, say through Amazon, the focus of most advertising on the trade publishing side is on the bookstores and the libraries. If the publisher can convince Barnes & Noble to stock your book on their shelves, then hopefully the reader purchases will flow from there. As a reader, I love to walk through a bookstore and peruse the shelves to find a new-to-me author or new-to-me book. Other than referrals from people I trust, this is how I find most of the books I read. Now, stop and think about that for a second. There are a lot of books released each year, more than can fit on the shelves at your local bookstore. So which ones end up on the shelves where someone like me can discover them. The ones that the bookstore chooses to buy. So before the customer can discover your book, someone has to have sold the bookstore on carrying that book in the first place. Same thing happens with the local library. Which books end up on the shelves there? the ones the library chooses to buy. Now, a trade published author can have some influence on this by developing a fan base who asks the store or the library to carry their books. Enough of your fans ask for your books, the bookstore or the library will start carrying them. But what is more likely to happen is that someone at your publisher will talk to the buyer for that bookstore chain and convince them to stock your book long before any of your fans are even asking for that book. There might not even be a conversation. There are catalogs that publishers send to the bookstores that the bookstores then use to pick the books they'll buy. The placement of a book in that catalog gives an indication to the bookstore about which books the publisher is pushing and those are the ones the bookstore is most likely to buy. To help drive sales of a book on the trade side, publishers will get reviews of that book in key publications, industry publications. A starred Kirkus review, for example, is very valuable. It's a big deal on the trade publishing side. Do you? as an uninformed reader, know about Kirkus? Do you read the New York Times book review and use it to buy books? Even if you said yes, most readers would answer no. Your average reader is going to listen to their Aunt Marge, who says your book is fabulous, before they're going to care about what Kirkus or the New York Times thought. But for trade publishing, Having those reviews can mean higher orders from the bookstores and libraries, the ones driving that organic discoverability that comes from someone browsing the shelves. So they matter on the trade side. So do book signings. I've heard more than one author tell a story about how they did an early book signing where no one showed or they spent most of the time giving directions to the bathroom but how they were so well-liked by that bookstore for how they handled it that that store ordered and promoted their books for them 
for the next decade of their career. On the self-publishing side, it's different. Most self-publishers will list their books on various retail sites. Amazon, Kobo, Nook, Google. It's pretty rare to have your books in a bookstore if you're self-published. Sure, there were the Amazon stores and Barnes & Noble had a deal where if you were selling enough copies through them, they do store placement too. And some authors who've crossed over from trade publishing to self-publishing do get regular bookstore orders. But I'd say 98% of all self-publishing sales are direct to a customer through a retail site or hand-sold by the author at something like a science fiction convention. This means that if you're going to self-publish, you need to focus your marketing efforts on reaching readers directly. It doesn't do you much good to be a model guest at a book signing if your books aren't set up for bookstore ordering, which is a whole other discussion we're not going to have here. And that Kirkus review? A waste of money. Remember, Aunt Marge knows nothing about them. I use them as an example because as of today, they are charging $425 to review self-published books. You can do a lot with $425 that will be far better for generating sales. If you're going to self-publish, don't get suckered because you're still in a trade publishing mindset. As a self-publisher, you need to choose advertising options that reach the ultimate customer, your reader. That's why 99 cent and free promos are so prevalent in self-publishing. But there are other options like CPC ads too. Those are ads where you pay each time someone clicks on the ad. Facebook ads are one example. AMS are another, and I'm a huge advocate of them because they appear on book pages on Amazon, which means you are right there in front of the reader when they're ready to spend money on books. Now, is it really as clean cut as I just made it sound? No. Trade published authors should also be working to connect with readers. That's what blogs and Twitter and Facebook groups are all about. And it is nice as a self-published author to have independent third parties review your book. I have a couple on my first in series fantasy novel and they do help. But I didn't pay $400 for them. One was free through participating in the self-publishing fantasy blog off. And one was through a Writer's Digest contest that was only $99 and gave me a chance at winning money. There is definitely a different focus depending on which path you take, and you need to know that, especially on the self-publishing side, where you're the one choosing where to spend advertising dollars. I have seen far too many new authors spend thousands to promote a self-published book and see no return for it because all of that money was spent on the types of advertising that work better for trade publishing than self-publishing. As a self-publisher, if your advertising dollars aren't getting your book in front of readers, think twice about spending that money. 